We'd like to welcome you back to part four of our current event weekly Bible study for October 21st, 2012. Um, I, this is, I finally got caught up on all my material. And this may, I may not do a teaching next week. If I do, it'll probably be a brief one. And try to kind of re-catch up on a lot of the other stuff. It's been a while since I took a break. And um, so there may not be a teaching next week. I just kind of want to give you a little heads up. So, next report. And this is a doozy. Uh, Sony sets a release date for Wonder Book and the Book of Spells from J.K. Rowling. Sony debuted the Wonder Book this past summer at E3 2012, the new peripheral which will launch alongside a wide array of children's titles, including the new J.K. Rowling interactive Harry Potter Book of Spells. Now, I've done two teachings on where I got into Harry Potter. I'll give you the links to those two. Those are your, wasn't that your favorite teaching, Taylor? Taylor Taylor said that was her favorite teaching ever I did. I don't know, Harry Potter. Um, Exposing it. So here's a picture of the new PlayStation Wonder Book, J.K. Rowling Book of Spells, with its own cursed little magic wand. It has its own camera and its own book. Okay, now I'm going to play the videos to this, but I'm going to give you a little bit of background on it before we get into that. The new interactive entertainment is projected to do well over this holiday season. And I, my comment is, pray against this wickedness so it doesn't do well. The collaboration with J.K. Rowling is the most anticipated title to hit the Wonder Book so, so far. To hit, to hit Wonder Book so far. But the new projects have been planned with BBC and, of course, Disney, because they're just pure evil. And, and if you don't believe that, can Disney in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. I have a 10-part teaching on them, uh, the pure evil. And that is sure to rival it in the future. The Book of Spells, in the Book of Spells, children will learn how to cast famous spells, including in Incendio, Wig, Wigardium, Lavosia and Expelleramus, I don't know, using a spell book and wand just like their favorite wizards. So you can learn witchcraft, and it's so fun. They just want to make witchcraft fun. That's what it's all about, right? Sony has confirmed that Wonder Book Book of Spells will launch in the United States on November 13th. Remember, imagine that, 13, the number of rebellion, 2012. Families can pick up the Wonder Book Book of Spells movie bundle at a discounted price of $79.99. Now, if you flip $79.99 upside down, you've got 6667. Well, actually, not even 7, but 666. Or you could, um, but uh, of course, you'll still need the PlayStation 3 as well, though. Now, for parents that already own the PlayStation, um, PlayStation Eye Camera and the PlayStation Move On motion controller, you can pick up the Wonder Book then, uh, Book of Spells, for $39.99. Flip that upside down, you got 666 as well. I just kind of thought that was interesting. Anyway, now, if you want to see my teachings on witchcraft, I've given you a whole bunch of ones I've done here. Witchcraft, the emerging one world religion. Now, as I've said before, witchcraft will be the backbone of the coming one world religion. Period. All the, lines, the, the signs and lion wonders and miracles that the Antichrist and the false prophet do are going to be based on the highest level witchcraft this world has ever known. Fact. Okay? The Antichrist is going, you know, he talks about him being a, a speaker of dark sentences. And he is going to be a, a uh, him and the, the false prophet are going to be unbelievably adept at high level witchcraft, okay? That is going to become the backbone of the coming one world religion under Antichrist and the false prophet, and this is the teaching I've done on it. This is why we need to arm ourselves with this information, because it really is a big deal, and how witchcraft is actually infiltrating and coming into the church on many different levels. And then I did another another teaching entitled The Deceptive Allure of Witchcraft, New Age and Near-Death Experiences, how there's such a lie with that, you might want to... Key on that. And then witchcraft in Mexico, the Santa Muerte death cult, Catholic skull worship, and Catholic inquisitions, part one, two, and three. And then witchcraft practices biblically exposed and defined. And then my teaching, biblically exposing and fighting New Age witchcraft. That's on page 16. 16 of the PDF. Oh no, 17, I'm sorry. Of the PDF for uh, 
October 21st, 2012. Now, here's a cutaway of the making of the World of Wonder book, the Book of Spells. Now, I'm going to play this tape and let you hear this for yourself. Okay, so this is officially from Sony and this London studio, PlayStation also. Uh, this is their official, one of their official ads for this thing. Pictures only appear on your television. Book of Spells is sold separately from the PS3 system, PlayStation Eye camera, and PlayStation Move motion controller. started many years ago in the early days of um, PlayStation 3. We had some technology for tracking markers, usually a, a pattern on a, on a card, and there were two game concepts in the running. One was a virtual pet, and one was a, an augmented reality book. We started with iPad because it only really involved tracking one marker. Then as iPad started ramping down, we looked at, well, how, we've made the technology now, so can we reuse this to, to create the book? And if you if you look at a wonder book, you'll notice that this same kind of marker design is repeated across each of the pages. And so this core technology on iPad formed the foundation for the technology on wonder book. We often describe it as looking in a magic mirror. So you look at the TV screen, you see everything, but all these other amazing things can come out of the book. The technology tracks the book. A good analogy is you have signals coming in through your eyes that you're broke. Okay, now, you're not understanding this probably because I wasn't fully understanding it as much either. What this is, this is, I, I've never seen anything like this. It's a book, okay? And every page has a big symbol on it, okay? And you're in front of the TV. There is a camera connected to the, to the gaming console pointing down at you. From on top of the TV, that can actually see, even if the book is flat on the ground, it could see the pages of the book. When it perceives that, it's recording you, but what it's projecting onto the TV is not only a picture of you that it's recording, but it's a picture of the book, and things are coming out of the book like an animation. I mean, it's, it's, if you look at the book, it's like, oh, it's just these big symbols in this book. But when you look up at the monitor, you'll see dragons, you'll see devils, you'll see demons flying out of it. And the wand that they give you is transformed into a, like a real witch's wand that you have in your hand. You're literally seeing this, this animation that you're literally, it's almost like you're physically interacting with this thing. I mean, it, it's unlike anything I've ever saw in my life. You, you, if you're not understanding this concept... Click on this video and you'll understand what the children are seeing. And interprets and makes sense of so you can see a person or an object. And that's what we're doing in Wonder Book. The signal comes in to the camera and we analyze it to look for the book and track it and then superimpose the graphics. With iPad, all we had to do was track and recognize this one marker. And also because it had a handle on the back, it meant that no one ever sort of put their hand in front of it because you held it from behind. This book is more than just a bunch of markers stuck together. You can occlude two pages while you've got the markers there, and it still works. You can turn a page and occlude a marker, and it still works. You can see where the book is underneath the pages that don't even have a marker on, and create a fully augmented experience for the entire book. So in other words, they're telling you how they've improved vastly on the technology to recognize, they're, they're calling them markers, but these symbols on the book and how, you know, the, the computer, it's becoming more and more foolproof. This is like a virtual reality type of thing that you're literally in the middle of interacting with. Wonder Book really fitted into becoming a spell book. And of course the move controller naturally became your wand. A very simple... Now here we show a kid to cast the fire-making spell, which is a real witchcraft spell. Draw a sharp zigzag shape in the air with your wand, and then you recite a certain thing or do a certain thing. And this is how you actually are um, practicing witchcraft right in this, this whole interactive environment that's just walking you through how to become a witch. Interfaces, very one-to-one -one movements. This whole idea, you're a wizard, uh, you need a magic wand and a spell book. It was much made in heaven. You've actually got... A this, this particular scene, it shows the book. They put the book up 
And what they're seeing on the screen is a literal, like, it looks like a hole going down into hell in the center of the page, and there's fire coming up out of it, and it, it almost looks 3D. It's, it's unbelievable. Look, in your living room, you're actually sitting there as a family together around a book that comes to life. That's never been done before. It allows... Here's a little devil. Actually role play ...to actually become part of the experience. Isn't this special? A mom and her son. And there's this little troll-like... Um, impish, evil-looking devil that's literally standing on the book, and they're literally turning it, and it's and it's like um, it's just staying right there, and they're looking at themselves on the screen, and yet there's this devil right in front of them. I wonder how much truth is really in that. I mean, I wonder, I'm sure that there's a gigantic demonic component with this book. And of course, in the book of spells, that means you becoming a wizard. <laughs> So all these kids are cheering, they're doing all these witchcraft spells and, and you know, doing all this stuff and they're cheering and, and they're totally mesmerized, you can tell. There's a dragon flying around. I mean this it's JK Rowling too, who's the author of Harry Potter. We are talking we're talking about as sick as you could possibly get here. Now, when I saw this, when I saw these wonderful men talking and this, uh, how they're so proud of this creation and, and things like this, all I could really think of are, are these verses in Matthew. But who shall, who, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believeth in me, it were better for him that a millstone hung about his neck and that he be drowned in the depths of the sea. Because what they're doing is they're indoctrinating these children at the earliest possible age into high-level witchcraft. This isn't even... Entry level. This is high level. A lot of the Harry Potter stuff was a high level witchcraft. Even the occultists that read it said that. Okay. Now we're really going further. We're really getting more interactive. We're actually getting into this virtual reality here. And they are making sure they're doing everything they can to make sure these children wind up in hell. And, and then profiting off it and, and being proud over it, essentially. Like, oh, there's, there's no harm. I mean, you know, to, to any of this stuff. And again, witchcraft is the essence of the coming one world religion. So it's very important for Satan to get as many children indoctrinated into high-level witchcraft at the earliest possible age so that they will be defiled to the maximum, so that they will be vessels for Satan that can be used in a mighty way in the coming one world, new world order. And they'll be the first ones lining up to take the mark of the beast. They'll be begging for it. Woe, but now next verse. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Now this is very offensive to God. Okay? For it must needs be that offenses come. So in other words, these offenses are going to happen. Okay? But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. When I saw these men there, you know, these guys you heard speaking and stuff. That's all I could think of. Woe to that man by whom this offense cometh. Taking little children to hell because of your witchcraft indoctrination. Woe unto you. It were better than a millstone were hung about your neck and you be cast in the midst of the sea. I pray to God they repent, but you know, obviously that's most likely not going to happen. Even so, it will not, and then going to verse 14, even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Specifically in reference to these little ones. But see, they're, they're, these men, these devils, these people that, that are tools and ministers of Satan, they're, they're trying to make sure as many little ones wind up in hell as possible. Because they're serving their master Satan. They may not even know they're serving Satan, but they are. So let's let's go to the next video, and I'm only going to play the first few minutes of it. Now, this is at an actual convention where they debuted this, and I'm going to go ahead and um, play this to about the three minute mark here. It's actually 15 minutes. I'm extremely excited to introduce you Wonder Book for PS3. Wonder Book puts a physical book in your hands and supports a new range of experiences that bring stories to life in your living room. Using augmented reality technology by PlayStation Eye that allows you to explore and interact like never before. One now, just so you know, this is before a huge audience they're debuting this.
book isn't limited to just stories. Imagine sailing the seven seas to explore an atlas, walking with dinosaurs, traveling beyond the stars to discover astronomy. Traditional reading experiences can take on a whole new meaning. We're working with some of the world's best-known developers and authors to create a diverse library of content, including educational and scientific experiences that fully utilize Wonderbook's capabilities. To give you a taste of the incredible talent developing for Wonderbook, I'm pleased to announce that Moonbot Studios is working hard on a fantastic new tale. Many of you already know Moonbot for their Oscar-winning short videos and incredibly successful interactive books for tablets and smartphones. Their new IP for Wonderbook is called Diggs Nightcrawler and is a stylish new detective story inspired by classic film noir. It's a brilliant example of the types of new, mesmerizing experiences Wonderbook will deliver. We'll have more to share with Moonbot and Diggs Nightcrawler very soon. We had ambitious goals for the content we wanted to launch with Wonderbook. So we began by working with one of the most popular authors in the world. An author who has brought unlimited entertainment, joy, and magic to all of our lives. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. The author of Harry Potter. The creator series. of the Harry Potter series. I'm pleased to announce Wonderbook Book of Spells. Book of Spells is the first title to be published for Wonderbook, and it reflects a strong collaboration between PlayStation and J.K. Rowling, and is also the first product to result from Sony's partnership with Pottermore, which is J.K. Rowling's unique website that builds an exciting online experience around the reading of her Harry Potter books. Featuring exclusive, new, and original writing from J.K. Rowling herself, Book of Spells comes to life as you read, allowing you to cast spells with the PlayStation Move, which becomes your magic wand. Book of Spells takes you on a fantastic journey to read and learn the secrets of wizardry and the art of spellcasting, just like a student at Hogwarts. The art of spellcasting. This is absolute, total, unmitigated, in-your-face, total indoctrination into witchcraft. And they're they are out there just proudly and boldly proclaiming this. They're not trying to even remotely hide their intentions. Here to, de to provide a demonstration of Wonderbook Book of Spells, please welcome Dave Ranyard. All right, I'm going to stop it here because we've got a whole other 12 minutes of video. If you want to watch the video, you can click on the link on the, t on the PDF. And he goes through there and he shows you. Okay, you know, here's a, here's somebody and he does his Z formation and then says this or whatever and then that casts the fire spell, which, you know, it's unbelievable. Now, this is just one, I believe, of the many witchcraft indoctrination tools that this Wonder Book is going to be um, uh, propagating and selling. Here's another one. Now, this one... Uh, let's see. It's called Elder Scrolls. It sure sounds demonic to me. You've got all of these different, um, I believe, different games that they're promoting. Well, particularly at this E3 2012, you've got Zombie U, which is zombies, the Elder Scrolls, which sounds like total witchcraft. You've got Aliens, Colonial Marines, this Elder Scrolls, I'm looking at a picture of it. It's some kind of demonic creature that they're they're using. I mean, it, it's it's just one thing after another. They're promoting this Star Wars 1313, which you know Star Wars is absolutely totally demonic and, and was one of the first brainwashing tools that the New World Order released in Hollywood. Um, anyway, it, it's it's about as bad as it gets. Um, there's other videos on this book of spells here. In fact, there's several other videos. You know, spells of fire. And I'm just saying, this is this is so um, it's so evil, so overt, so in your face, so confirming to so many other teachings. And I, I posted a lot of those that I've done in the past. That this is such a huge, important thing for Satan. To indoctrinate children and to defile them at the earliest possible age. 
through witchcraft, which is one of the most powerful ways to defile any person, regardless of age. Oh, it's just unbelievable. So anyway, I give you those links there. I think this is something to obviously add into um, praying against because it is pure wickedness. Uh, next article here. E orbs, ectofog, and trail spirit fog exposed. Now this is a very old email that I sent out a long time ago. And I might have covered this in one of my previous teachings, but I want to recover it because I had another email I'm going to read regarding this. Uh, after my teaching entitled, now this is a teaching, i give you a link to it, it's called My Recent Trip Down Charismania Lane, like the charismatic movement. Anyway, i give you a link if you want to hear that. I had several, I, I think I laughed harder in that teaching than I ever did in any others. I had several inquiries about the demonic phenomenon of orbs. Uh, I attached a picture of a party, I was not there, but that my unsaved, at the time they were unsaved parents threw the year before last for New Year's Eve. Now this was a long time ago. Um, this is a classic picture of an orb over the man's body, and he's even surrounded by a demonic fog that no one can explain, called in paranormal terms an ectotrail or a spirit fog. Now, I give you a, another link so you can see what some orbs look like if you're not sure what they are. This would be a paranormal researcher's dream, meaning this party that my parents threw. Over the course of the night, at least 30 to 40 orbs were photographed. The man that this orb appeared over is named David Johnson. He is the bass player for the famous demonic band, the Neville Brothers. It's a blues rock band. He is the actual real bass player. My parents knew him. He lived in Fort Myers when he wasn't on tour, and you could hire him to come to your parties and to like be the DJ and he'd play the bass and he'd sing and stuff like that. And they were good buddies with him. My parents were always into stuff like that. I even give you a link to his website. Um, and it showed the picture. I mean, it was taken at my parents' party. This was on their porch. Um, you'll see a picture of a, a big stained glass Siamese cat hanging in the back. My parents, my dad loves Siamese cats. Um, also, I know, uh, anyway, you could probably do a study on Siamese cats with some of the stuff I know. But there's a big, um, it looks like he's enveloped in fog. I mean, it is some of the worst ecto fog or the spirit fog I've ever seen. I mean, it's hard to even see him. And then he's got one, two, three, looks like at least three different orbs. One of them's right over his body. And that we, we drew a little arrow in there. Somebody did. I don't know how they did that. And he's sitting there, and it's at my parents, and then it's he's overlooking my parents' pool. And there was people in front of him dancing. And through the course of the night, I looked at the pictures. And I mean, there was like orbs in most of the pictures, particularly on the porch. My parents' house was so haunted and so full of this stuff that you could look, my dad was in the video security, on the porch, you could literally see orbs on the video security cameras, like if you looked at the cameras at night, just swirling. Hundreds of them. You could see them anytime you went over there. I, I've hardly ever been to a more haunted house than my parents. Why? Well, I don't know exactly what went on in that land before they moved in. Of course, they, we built that house from scratch. But they had so many pieces of like African tribal artwork and all kind of new age things. Um, um, the... Uh, Oh, my word. What, what were some of the things? They, they, all kind of stuff. They had, My mom, in different rooms, had different... They, they had more money than they knew what to do with at one time. And they were they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars decorating this place. And, I mean, it was unbelievable. All of the cursed statues and the tribal stuff and the African stuff and all of a lot of the New Age stuff. They had statues. And um, they had... Um, they had a big obelisk. In one of the rooms, a pyramid, um, a lot of, a lot of parties over the years. It was, a, it was a house that was made to party in, and so a lot of sin, I really believe, committed in the house over the years, and, and that gives um, these demonic, devil-like entities, which will manifest in these orbs and this spirit fog stuff. It gives them a right to exist. The night that I finally convinced them, now I didn't convince them to destroy everything, but I got a good. Good whack. I finally set them down. I'm like, listen, you got all these orbs. You got all this demonic activity going on in the house. Let me destroy some of these things you've got in here, these idols. 
I destroyed quite a bit. Obviously, didn't get everything. Well, not obviously, but they weren't saved at the time. So it was an absolute miracle of God I was able to destroy. I went out into their garage, and I took everything they'd let me, and I was chopping it up, hacking it apart, breaking it, whatever I could do to try to... And that very same night, when you rechecked the camera on the... My dad had infrared IR, infrared cameras all around the outside. But the one place in particular was the porch where you could see these orbs swirling. They were gone. Totally gone. I'm not saying all evil activity ceased at the house, but it was way better. Just goes to show you how important it is to get cursed objects out of your house. It wasn't my imagination. I, I came back and said, look, you could see it was black and white. Totally black and white. Would have been a great episode for like a real Christian paranormal investigation. Most of the time, these stupid paranormal shows, they go in, oh, we want to talk to the spirit. We want to release its burden so it can go to the white light. What, the white light of Satan? All these things are deceivers. They're not there to bring you truth. They're there to deceive you. And, or they'll bring their Catholic priest in, or their Hindu priest, or their shaman, or whatever. They'll burn some sage, and, every, and you know, it's such garbage. But it was amazing the difference you could see in that one, you know, just from that, destroying all that stuff in the garage, and the orb activity on the porch, I mean, went from literally hundreds of these things swirling to, to nothing. I couldn't even detect one happen that quick. So anyway... Uh, got another email this week from a listener named Coral, and she said, always uh, good to be reminded of this, lest I forget a book I found helpful. I guess it was about the orbs, because I think I sent her that picture. A book I found helpful on this is Occult Bondage and Deliverance by Co. I was wondering if you would mind doing a program on the demonic spirit of the orb form, the, what she calls the Wandering Demonic Armies. They are coming on mass at present. I... To put it bluntly, we are under invasion. I was surrounded and attacked by an army of them. Thousands under the command of higher demons. They literally flew away as I recited the Lord's Prayer. I even have photos. The media are inserting orbs into our advertisements, video clips, and magazines in order to condition us to their presence. They seem harmless, but they are far from it, creating delusions, physical illness, and nightmares, and I believe they assist in the abductions and weather manipulation. No longer relegated to cemeteries, they are turning up in photos of real estate sites, dating sites, children's birthday parties, churches, etc. Where once they were shy of parapsychologists, they are now interacting and communicating with them. This is all part of the end-time delusion, and all part of the releasing of evil, that mass witchcraft is producing, and the part of the, of the church virtually doing nothing to fight any of this. I'm talking your typical 501c3 corporate church. They're just, oh, whatever, we're, we're not going to engage evil, we're afraid of it. You crazy? You know, that's almost their attitude. Uh, from my experiences, they are usually under higher demons who come in the form of black mist or fog shapes, which would coincide with the picture I just posted here, where you've got this spirit fog, that's as thick as pea soup and orbs interposed over the guy's body. It was not photoshopped. I mean, these pictures were, you know, just flat out taken. And so, anyway, I believe this is the first wave to be followed by higher level entities as we are inadvertently giving them rights while being programmed by them. She's probably got a lot of good points. This is part of the whole spiritual, literal spiritual battle that will be manifesting in more of a literal form as the day and times progress. So my reply is, um, and I'm running out of time here, but I was just going to kind of skim over this. My reply, see information below for many proactive biblical steps on dealing with evil entities. Now this is the attachment. I have went over this a little bit before in past, but this is something that you really need to read for yourself and kind of implement. Okay, if you're dealing with evil entities, and we all are, obviously, because we battle not against flesh and blood, biblical proactive actions that can really make a difference when dealing with evil entities. This is my attachment, I just posted it in here. Number one, get at least one King James Bible CD and play it 24-7 wherever you are, somewhere in your house. Um, I like the book of Revelation because it reminds the devils of their future, and they don't like it. So, I like to play that one. Um, 
Now, again, I'm just going to cover the titles of each point. Two, now some of these dollar stores have these CDs as well. Um, they actually have the book of Revelation just for a buck. I've seen them like have the whole Old and New Testament for a dollar. Their, their technology is getting better. Um, obviously, next one of the next points, put on the form of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay, i give you those verses there. Um, and then our authority in Christ and warring in the spirit. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Psalm 91, 13. You know, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and sound mind. You know, th- for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And there, there's a whole bunch of verses here. Some of them I've already covered today. Uh, and the 70 returned again with joy to Jesus, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Gotta believe it, though. You know? Behold, I give, you, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, notwithstanding in this rejoice not, but that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Number point three, plead the blood of Jesus over your house, your property, your cars, your family, yourself. Revelation twelve eleven. they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved their lives not unto the death. And they love not their lives unto the death. And then going further, four point four, pray for the Lord's angels to encamp around about you, your family, your house, and property. Um, five, confess and repent of sin. And again, I get into a whole thing there regarding that particular subject and some teachings I've done on that. Six, pray. Uh, and again, some of these could fall under the category of Psalm 64. And precatory prayers, there's a lot of imprecatory prayers. Though. Psalm 91, Psalm 94. Um, I give you the, the link to my teaching on imprecatory prayers and then some other Bible verses to think about. Um, seven, stop any and all sexual sins. This is a covered in this point seven. My studies on that. And then eight, cleaning your house of cursed objects or demons. Now, the link I give here, I'm not saying I agree with everything they say, but it gives you kind of a starting point. It's, it's a hard subject to get information about, you know. So anyway, this might help you with that. And then number nine, fasting. Jesus Christ said certain types of devils. Uh, but this kind, this kind of devil does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So sometimes that's how you have to deal with certain things, uh, demonic strongholds. And there's a whole little article on that. And then I get into the whole, a whole bunch of links on fasting. All kind of questions answered about fasting. Fasting, huge. Okay, tons of links, probably a good 20. And then another huge article on fasting itself. Okay, and then the book The War on Saints by Jesse Penn Lewis. And I believe that there's chapters are all here. They're clickable. You can actually read them online. Or buy the book if you'd like. And then the last thing is ways to pray regarding Halloween. Now these are just some ways you can. Got this from a listener. And he said, um, someone wrote and told me that she and some other church members were going to pray at their church on Halloween. Um, she asked me for some prayer requests and I sent them to her. I am posting them in hopes that you will be encouraged to pray too. Uh, and so, he goes on to say to us, Praise the Lord, I'm so glad you want to pray on Halloween and that others will pray with you. I can give you some of the things we pray about before and during Halloween. I know the Lord will lead you as well. Number one, pray that those in the occult world will not be successful in recruiting people into Satanism and witchcraft through Halloween parties and recruitment going on during this time. Teens are especially targeted by occultists. These are some things that, unless somebody reminds you of them, you might not even think to pray about it, but they're really good, some good points. Number two, pray that God will protect the children from being spiritually harmed by eating candy that has been prayed over and cursed by Satanists. Now this is a common thing they do during Halloween. While candy that is marked and packaged for that purpose of using a Halloween ritual is cursed and has devils attached to it, by default, some companies bless, quote, bless their own candy in honor of Satan's Halloween. In other words, they come out with a special Halloween wrapper or whatever. Witches and Satanists like to place their own specific curses on candy before they hand it out to trick-or-treaters. That's a fact. Um, 
Three, pray that Christians would heed the Holy Spirit's conviction and understand that Halloween is not of God and that they would understand that they are courting the God-sent delusion if they do not turn from this willful fellowship with devils. Pray they would repent or participate in Halloween and all occult-related activities. Four, have everyone in the group renounce out loud the times they practice, participated in Halloween, or any other occult-related things, such as using tarot cards, Ouija boards, reading occult-themed books, watching occult-related movies. All Christians need to do this as soon as they are saved. Every bit of place or permission to afflict their lives they gave to Satan before and after they were saved needs to be taken away. They need to renounce all works of darkness, all the place they gave to the devil through touching an unclean thing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Five, pray and ask God to help prevent kidnappings of people for the purpose of human sacrifice prior to and on Halloween. Most of the time, though, it's not on Halloween. They've already done their preparatory kidnapping. Um, That's something we've covered in previous things as well. Pray that God would arrange circumstances so that people who are being prepared for ritual human sacrifice would actually be able to escape. Pray that God would work and perform miracles so that they can get away. He is willing to do this and has done this mightily in the past in response to the prayer of his saints. God is against this evil and can act if his people will believe and pray. Not to say that, that you know, sometimes people have been kidnapped and knew, but nobody knew what was going on and God's intervened in those behalfs as well because of the prayer of the person being kidnapped. Anyway, pray that God would prevent Satan from getting his human sacrifices in other ways, such as purposely cause deaths in hospitals, nursing homes, hospices, etc. Another good point. I hadn't even really thought about some of these. Pray that traffic accidents, fires, and all manner of planned disasters would not be fulfilled as a result of the curses on this dark night. And really, it's it's just not Halloween. Remember, it's, it's the day after, it's it's the days before. It's actually about a three or four day period. where there. But then there's the whole preparatory time of the sacrificial bi- victims, which is what we're in right now, leading up to Halloween. Okay, so it's really the whole time period. Um, going further... Satan's followers conjure demons to work destruction on this night especially. Also pray that spells, curses, and various incantations would be canceled rather than fulfilled on Halloween night. Number nine, pray that people who escape would surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and continue to grow in their knowledge and faithfulness to him. Ten, pray that Satan's followers defect and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and help the victims who are being held to escape so they won't be sacrificed. Great points. Many Luciferian witches and Satanists who were conceived and reared for this purpose are being held for human sacrifice. Pray that they will escape as well. God has done this before and will do it again. Number 11. Pray that God would cover the witch and the Satanist escapees with his divine protection so they would not be found and killed. Pray that they would be soon born again and protected from being killed in retaliation if they come forward and speak out against these atrocities. Pray that God would intervene and create circumstances that will prevent the ceremonial sacrifices from taking place. Uh, That was 12. 13. Pray that God would work in any way he he deems necessary in order to stop the sacrifices, allow the the victims to escape to permanent safety, cause them cause those who serve Satan to be in awe of the power and holiness of the real God, the most high God of the Holy Bible, and turn to him in sincere faith. 14. Ask God to bring Christians to repentance and ask him to do what is necessary to cause them to understand the spiritual and physical safety is found by only abiding in Jesus Christ. And also the repentance of them embracing Halloween. Because most most churches at this point embrace it in one way, shape, or form. And that was actually from Liberty of the Captives, Captives.net who she's been a good friend of mine uh, for a long time. Um, and it's What to Pray on Halloween. Very good website. And I give you the links there. And then this could also be used for any holidays as well. The, particularly the big ones where human sacrifice is performed. Not just Halloween. But it's a good template to go off of. It really is. It's an excellent template. So, that's page. We're up to page 27. And that's all we have for today. And um, I'm going to, like I said, probably next week we're going to take a week off. And, and I would like to... By the time I would come back, it would actually be past Halloween. And this is something I would like to take some extra time next week and have everybody in my listeners devote some specific time to this, to what I just highlighted. Um, you know, the dealing with the evil entities attachment that I included and then, and then also these specific prayers for Halloween. I think it would be excellent. Just like I had us all 
well, those that participated, the three-day, no fast, uh, no water, no food back in the summer. And, you know, if there's some listeners that feel compelled to do some fasting along with this, that would be excellent. Fasting supercharges prayers. Um, and then also devoting some extra time to this. Because this is the, the, as far as an occultic standpoint, this is the most, the highest satanic holiday all year. You know, it's obviously the most overt satanic holiday all year. And it's also the highest one. And, um, you know, they're not just doing this just for the sheer pleasure of them, you know, um, sacrificing little babies and humans and animals, which they take pleasure in. And I can't relate, understand that. But they're doing it for the power and the benefit that they're trying to gain by casting these spells and by making these human sacrifices. You know, there's a benefit to witchcraft. It may be a sick, twisted, demented benefit, but that's what they're after. The people that do these things. And so, um, this is something that, yes, I, I think that we need to really focus in on and um, for the next, you know, couple weeks. And if I, get, again, if I do a teaching next week, it'll probably be a very brief one. If something big uh, breaks or whatever between now and the, and the next teaching, I'll do a teaching to do that. But, um, I think it'd be good that we just focus in on this and then I need to kind of revamp and catch up some of my, uh, cause I'm totally out of material at this point. I need to revamp that. So anyway, um, God bless you. And, um, I'll go ahead and close us out in a word of prayer here. Heavenly father, we do thank you for this day and this time you've let us come together again. I do pray God you forgive us for any and all sins we've committed as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And that the words of our, of our mouth and the meditations of our heart will be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. I pray you cleanse us from presumptuous sins and secret faults that they would not have dominion over us, that there would be nothing in our lives that would hinder our prayers, Lord, and if there are, that you would show those things to us and that we would be obedient and um, repent, Lord God, regarding these matters. I do pray, God, that we would take the necessary time in the next couple weeks, Lord, to really... Um, Focus in on what you would have us be praying about uh, in regard to also this upcoming Halloween, Lord, that we would focus in on that and that you would intervene in these situations across planet Earth, that you would free these sacrificial victims, Lord, that your name be glorified, that many would be saved, that everything that Satan has planned for this coming Hall Halloween period, Lord, you would intervene, God, and that you would stop this wickedness that they have planned for these victims, Lord God. For the humans, the babies, the, the moms, the dads, the teenagers, the boys, the girls, the animals, Lord God, they have scheduled. I just pray to God you intervene in every single instance worldwide, whether they be above the ground, below the ground, wherever they may be, Lord, you know where they are. And that, Lord God, that, that you would free them, that all of these witches and warlocks and occultists and pagans that are doing these things, that you would strip them of every bit of their witchcraft power, Lord, that every bit of ability they have to work wickedness, every bit of power that they think they have would be stripped from them bare, Lord God. They would have no more occultic power to cast spells to um, work wickedness, to be a curse to others, it would all be stripped from them bare, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, your angelic host, and to the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, I pray to God you intervene in all of these situations. The blood of Jesus Christ would be against this wickedness, Lord God, that your name be glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that many would be saved. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over these victims, Lord, that they would schedule over the animals, the humans, Lord. I pray to God for your divine intervention, for your holy angelic host, that you would dispatch legions of angels toward this end, toward wherever this is taking place, Lord God, and that, Lord God, that this wickedness and evil would be exposed where the world could not deny it, where it wouldn't be swept under the rug, and that, and that your mighty intervention would not be known. I pray to God that that 
would be known worldwide, Lord God, that all men would see and fear and declare the work of God, that they would wisely consider of your doing, and that the righteous would be glad in the Lord and trust in you, and all the upright heart would glory. And we ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.